Hello, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if this is your first time here, I'm glad to have you. And I want to say happy Orktober to everyone. Also, happy Halloween. I know that's coming up. I know I've been slacking on this video a little bit, but I finally got around to actually doing it. I really couldn't find any inspiration for building a grot tank, but I kind of went outside and I just sat down on my table and it's kind of hit me. What you're looking at here is all the stuff I'll be using to complete this build. I'll leave a list right here and then later on in the video I'll talk about more about what I'm doing with them. If you could do me a favor, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps me out. It lets me know you guys are really enjoying the videos and that I should make more. Starting off, I cut out the main body shape of this tank using a foam block. I just cut it with my X-Acto razor saw. Once I had that done, I needed to put plastic card all around it so I could have a nice firm place so I could glue down more bits. Uh, so to do that, I just grabbed my sheet of, I believe this is half millimeter plastic card. I drew out the shapes for each of the sides and then I just cut them out and then used hot glue to put them on. Make sure you're not being stupid because I was being stupid and accidentally left my hot glue gun uh, on for three days. That's why some of the glue you see there looks kind of orange. Once you have all your plastic card cut out and trimmed and glued on, we're going to move on to the tracks. So for this model, I used tracks I got off eBay. I bought a 164th model tank kit. It came with four tanks. I think I paid $15 for it. Um, so basically all I'm doing is I'm measuring out how long I need the tank tracks. Once I have the measurements, I just simply cut them in half and then I glued them together. It's kind of janky looking, but in the end it works out pretty well. Now with my tank tracks cut out, I'm going to go ahead and glue them onto the side. Don't worry too much about the gaps and a little bit of the tracks you can see there. Uh, we're going to end up filling that in later with some plastic card, uh, but for now you just need to take as much super glue as you can and just glue them straight on the sides. Uh, make sure you have them oriented the right way, that way you don't mix anything up. Now with the tracks attached, we're going to go ahead and attach the main battle weapon of this tank. Uh, I decided to use this piece. I got it out of a bits bag that I bought off eBay. I believe this part to a Bane blade. I know that grot tanks are supposed to have, you know, shooters or burners on them. Uh, but I decided, you know, this would be like the lead grot tank. And since he's the lead grot tank commander, uh, he decided he wanted one big gun, which he could only probably shoot once. Uh, I think it works out perfectly.
the battle cannon, I decided to add a few more bits uh, before I started adding armor plating on. So for this, I used, I believe that is a rhino hatch. Uh, I'm gonna have a little grot sticking out of that. And I used some piece that was also in that bitch bag that I bought. Uh, I used it as exhaust. You'll see later on, I decided to get rid of it. I pulled it back out, covered up the hole with some plastic card, and I added some exhaust in a different position. But from here on, I'm just attaching random plates on it. So, you know, give it that classic orc scrappy look. Now with all the scrap panels on the tank, I decided to go ahead and start adding the rest of the bit. I use this little grot, he's the one holding his hands above his head uh, with the little grenade. I got it from the grot box, I actually had to go out and buy that because I didn't have it. Once I had that, uh, I had this little round piece, I believe it is the hatch to a chimera. It's either that or it's some sort of like satellite dish, I'm not too sure. Uh, but from there I used some uh, plastic tubing, I made the exhaust for it, I added two exhausts coming off of it, and then a little bit after this I started adding a couple more bits but pretty much just add whatever you think looks good. Now with all the bits on there, it's time to start adding the rivets. So for the rivets, I have a pretty simple technique. I take a little piece of plastic, lay it down, I put a pool of super glue on it, that way it doesn't dry up, and then I grab my one millimeter plastic card rod, and I also get some super glue activator. First step is you take the super glue activator, drop it around on the spot where you want it, wipe away most of it with a paper towel or a napkin, and then from there you take, dip the end of the plastic card rod into the super glue, and then put the rivet, or take the plastic card rod and put it on where you want it at the armored plate. Once it's dry, you take your cutters, uh, cut it to the length you want, and then you just repeat the process until you have a bunch of little rivets.
As you can see here, the rivet effect is finally finished. Uh, once I had all those, I ended up taking half inch by quarter inch half millimeter plastic card and attaching those to the tracks. That helps cover up the gaps and it also gives it a more aggressive track pattern. And now it's finally time to start painting. I started off by priming with Vallejo Surface Primer Black through my airbrush. Once finished with priming, I stippled on Vallejo Burnt Umber to cover 90% of the tank to give it a nice rusty base. Next I switched to Burnt Sienna and continued stippling but only covering about 50% of the model at this time. After that I grabbed lead belcher and I dry brushed it across the entire model. Now I grabbed pure red from Army Painter and I stippled it across the model, I'm making sure to leave weathering around the panels. Once I finished with the pure red, I switched over to Vallejo Flat Yellow. I ended up actually switching this color again to Uriel Yellow from Citadel, but I went around, covered the little metallic teeth and any extra bits I wanted in that yellow. All I had left was to paint the little grot sticking out of the tank hatch. To get this started I used some gray and gave it a nice even coat over all the exposed parts. Using some spaceship exterior from Armor Painter, I put it out on my palette, dipped my dry brush in it, rubbed it around, and then I dry brushed the grot all over the top and the sides where light would be hitting him. And finally I used some contrast paints and speed paints to finish the little grog so that the tank would be tabletop ready. Thank you for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the next one.